go over some of the features of the generator panel here. Again, when you select your patient, it's going to automatically talk to the generator. Depending on your body part, it's going to pick, of course, the corresponding uh, body part on the generator. Just because I've set it to be a particular preset does not mean you have to keep it that way. I'm going to show you how you can change those things. So you'll see here on the generator panel that I have selected an AP pelvis or hip. It could be, this can be used for either. The the protocol that's highlighted in orange is the one that is selected. If you don't want to use this one, maybe you want to switch to a manual technique. Typically, I have a manual technique right below, so you, and you can select that just by touching the screen. Again, the orange one is the one that is ready to be exposed. On the left side, you'll notice that this is the icon for the table. There's an icon for cassette or free cassette or tabletop. This again is your table bucky. This one is your wall bucky. This last one over here is for non-canon work. So if you're going to do uh, a film onto the CR cassette or you have a physicist that uh, wants to do any testing without uh, involving the canon system uh, or even tube warm-up, those will all be on that last choice there. The next button down, this is your photo timer selection. You can select any combination of the three photo timers. You may turn them off by using this selection here. Or you can maybe, for a pelvis, you can choose all three. If you have a patient with a prosthesis, you may want to, if the prosthesis is on the patient's left, you may want to choose um, maybe a combination that's not going to include the photo timer that's underneath the prosthesis. All right, so we've set our patient up on the Canon screen for an AP pelvis on the table. We look on the generator panel here, we can see that the, the pro protocol that's in orange is the one selected to be, that's what I'm gonna get when I shoot. Anything that's in blue is, is another choice, but it is not active. You will see that a lot of times I will have a photo time technique and write under it a manually time technique. You could always have the option to switch to that manual technique if you want. Anytime you see a down arrow on the side here, you have another page behind that page. And obviously the arrow up is going to take you back. All right, so I just set up again for the can from the Canon, sending a message to the generator that I'm doing an AP pelvis on the table. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the table icon. This is my photo timer icon. Down here, I have my patient habitus uh, selection. You can see we have the skinny, the normal, and the sumo wrestler. This is a Japanese machine, after all. Uh, changing to one of these will change your technique according to what's programmed and it will underline what has been changed. So in this case, it went up another 5 kV and gave us a longer backup time. If you do want to switch to a manual technique, I can select that one underneath here. Now this one is orange. This is the one I have selected. My AEC is off, tells me over here. And up here, I ha I'm now in what we call uh, mass mode. So in other words, rather than MA and time, it's giving me my total mass. To change any of these parameters, I've got dials here. The out, outer edges of the dials will do small changes. The inner arrows will do bigger changes. Same is true for all the dials. And time as well. If you are on a photo time technique, you will notice it goes back into MA and time mode. If you feel you need a longer backup time or you want to change your MA station, maybe you've got a, you're on a, if you're on a small focal, you'll have a green light on the small focal. If you feel like you need 
a faster time, you've got a, a patient not holding still, you always have the option of changing that MA station. As you go up, it will automatically change to the large focal as it needs to. Once you change your setting on the Canon screen, the, it will send another message to the generator, setting your technique again. So now I'm set up for an upright hip on the center cell. Again, if I wish to switch to manual, I have that choice right here. Back to photo timer there. Now you'll see that this pelvis selects all three photo cells. Again, if I don't feel my patients over all three photo cells, I have that ability to change that if I need to. All right, real quick, I want to show you one other interesting technique I have in here. I do have you set up to do breathing T-spines. It's available on the table and the wall. When switching to this, you're gonna, you'll see you have a very low MA station and you have 2.8 seconds will come up. The 25 MA station is the lowest you can go. Three seconds is the maximum time you can use for the Canon system. After three seconds, the plate stops receiving uh, any more radiation, so you're going to top out at three seconds. So right now, 25 MA at 2.8 seconds, just under 75. I think it turns out to be 71 mass. You'll notice that the KV is fairly low. 71 mass is, is a pretty significant technique for this system. Uh, if you've got a smaller patient, or an, maybe a, a senior patient, you'll want to go down to maybe about 75 kV. And remember, you're, you're going to need to adjust your time. You can go down in time to compensate for your patient's uh, size. 20, with 25 MA being the, the lowest we can go on the, on the uh, small focal spot, uh, you're, you're obviously going to have to, uh, you know, kind of play with that technique a little to get your optimal uh, dose. One more note about this system. It does prefer that you rotor up, wait for that rotor to be ready before you make your exposure. You have a rotor button here. All right, let me switch to tabletop here. I have a rotor up but button here. I have to wait for this to go solid green and for that beep before I can expose with the other button. For those of you that like the hand switch, it's going to be halfway down. Again, wait for that solid green before you expose all the way. The reason for this is the way that the, the, the tube gets its information, it, it, will, it knows what MA station you've chosen. Once the rotor up signal is given to you, then that MA station is ready to shoot. If you go straight to exposure without rotoring up, the generator will try to compensate and fire before it necessarily has gotten all the way, that particular MA station all the way heated and ready. So you may not get your full exposure if you don't wait for that, uh, the ready, the rotor ready signal. All right, so now we're going to go over the tube head here. You have an all locks release here as well as up here. This is your vertical lock here. This is your rotate round axis lock. And this one is your cranial caudal. One quick note on this cranial caudal, if you put pressure on the handles first and then try to unlock this, it will not turn. You need to press it first, then make your turn. If you find yourself that you have managed to lock this, Occasionally, you need to go the opposite direction as the one you locked it in to begin with in order to unlock it. So that's a very common problem. The rest of the locks are not quite as sensitive, but if, if they don't move, let go and, lock, and release the lock again before you put pressure on the overhead. All right, on the screen here, you'll notice that we do have our detente on. This is on, this is off. So if you are going to move from one workspace to another, 
it's a good idea to keep those turned off so you don't run into the locks and kind of jam up. It's, it, they lock in pretty hard so you know you're there. The buttons are also color coded so you'll notice that this pale green one goes with the vertical. The yellow will go with the longitudinal and the pink will go with transverse. You'll see those colors up at the top. There are also markings for your detente's uh, in addition to the locks that are there. All right, so you'll notice also on here you have another button here. This is your uh, tracking button. So this is set to track to, eight, to 40 inches, and right now I'm set to the table bucky, so it's tracking 40 inches to the table bucky. If I am on a tabletop technique, it's going to track to 40 inches to the tabletop. Okay. Up in the right hand corner here, I, I have a message that says manual, which just means I'm on a tabletop. You may see other messages. Uh, if you see the not ready message, you can click the I and the computer will tell you why it's not ready. In this case, the cassette or the detector is not in the table bucky and that's why I'm getting a not ready. You'll notice when I switch to tabletop, it's not quite so worried about whether or not that's in the bucky because it knows that you're shooting to free table. All right, you also have the ability here to switch to the generator screen from this tab here. This tab is your positional information. This one is your generator screen, and this will match whatever is set up on the, the, re the other generator. You can change your techniques from out here if you want to by just touching what you want to change. Double arrows are big jumps, single arrow arrows are small jumps. And then close that before your exposure. You can also switch from uh, a photo time technique to a manual technique from out here. If you are actually going to change a workspace, in other words, you're going to go from a cassette base to a table, that is not something you want to do from the tube head here. You want to do that actually in the Canon program first. Um, otherwise you may be set on one detector on the generator, a different detector on the uh, Canon, and the two won't talk to each other correctly. All right, but I will switch back to our tabletop here. There we go. And again, back to the positional information here. All right, so now we're set up to shoot to the wall stand here. In order to use the auto track to the wall stand, we ha there has to be four things uh, in place for that to work. First is you need to be on the wall stand icon. Next is you need the first two uh, locks on. So you need to be locked in uh, at 72 or 40 in 44 inches and you need to be locked into the center. The other thing that is necessary is you have to be locked into the zero position on your rotation. Once you have those four things in place, you're able to use the auto track feature uh, from the Bucky. So once we've got our four things set on our uh, tube, we can use the auto track feature from the Bucky. Again, it's going to drive from the Bucky this time. So I'm going to adjust my Bucky where I need it to be. Notice that when I press re the lock release, I do get my uh, collimator light coming on so I can see what, see what I'm doing. Uh, once I've got my Bucky where I want, I press and hold the bottom button and it will auto track to the center. If you move again, press and hold, wait for those three beeps to know that you are all lined up. Note that when you go low for say a standing uh, knee, once you press the auto track button, if you hear a steady beep, you need to let go. Double check that it's clear underneath the tube. Press again. It's going to go much slower once it gets to the floor and it. It's a safety feature to make sure you're not uh, squashing anything underneath the tube. But again, once it's cleared that, a press and hold. Wait for those three beeps and you're lined up. All right, I want to show you from another angle, once again, setting up 
for a low standing knee or something along those lines. When you press and hold to auto track, when you get a long steady beep, let go of the auto track, double check that you're clear under the tube, press again, it'll go about half speed, but you'll get that same triple beep saying it's done and lined up and ready. All right, so just to go over the basics on the table here, you have kick pedals down near the floor here. You have up and down, as well as all locks release on each end. The bucky is a press button to release and line up where you need it to be. On the end here, which actually does not have to be on the end, you can position this handle anywhere along either rail. On this handle here, you also have up and down, as well as a tabletop all locks release. You'll notice that when I press the all locks release, whether it's the mushroom button or the pedal, again, you're going to get your collimator light on uh, so that you can see where you're positioning. The other lock that's important under here, there's a safety lock. That's going to lock all table travel, which is kind of handy if you've got parents out here holding. You're worried that you know someone's going to accidentally bump something and move the table. You can have this lock on. You can still position the tube. You can still make your exposures, but you're locked on all table movement. Uh, to release that, just twist and the light will go off. There's a similar button on the wall stand, and whichever button is activated is the one you will need to unlock to release because both are going to lock simultaneously. So once we're on the table, again, our auto, auto position is going to put us right at our 40 inches again. We have two more buttons at this end of the table. This is going to lock your transverse movement. So if you are going to, if you want to do a study where you're going just up and down and you don't want the table to move sideways, you can uh, activate that lock and it's going to lock that. And this, the second button here is also an auto track and it will track you to your 40 inches to your table. The uh, weight limit on this table is 650 pounds. So, uh, and that is with all table movements. You can still lift, you can cantilever at any, uh, any way you need to. Um, any, any table movements are allowed with 650 pounds.